Ohio's Attorney General is leading a seven-state lawsuit over the NCAA's transfer policies. Ohio AG Dave Yost believes that they amount to collusion. At the same time, local and national law enforcement are responding and investigating a school bomb threat that was sent out to hundreds of schools here and across the country on Sunday morning, which the FBI has so far deemed not credible. I'm joined now by Yost to get an update on this and more. Thank you for taking the time. You know, we have hundreds of school districts across the valley in Northeast Ohio that sent out a alerts to parents last night about a school bomb threat. Local school officials tell us they received this email claiming to be from a foreign terrorist group stating that multiple explosives were placed in school buildings. Why is this happening? Well, God only knows why it's happening, but thankfully it appears that this is a hoax. Uh, law enforcement across the state is responding. They're going through the schools. Uh, they're making sure everything's okay. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, a lot of confidence in the work that's being done. Uh, but it, you ought to know, and people ought to know that this is a crime. It's a serious crime. It's a felony uh, to phone in this kind of a terroristic threat. And after we're sure that everybody's safe and our schools are in good shape, uh, you can bet that the investigation is going to continue on and that when we've identified the source of these threats, they're going to end up in court and they're probably heading to prison. You're heading up the lawsuit against NCAA regarding its transfer policies. You allege that amounts to collusion. Transfer players used to have to sit out a year after transferring, but not anymore. So where is the NCAA breaking the law in your opinion? Well, they only get, uh, they only get that first year. If they try to transfer a second time, they have to sit out for a year. Uh, and that's where we believe that they're breaking federal antitrust law, the Sherman Act. In addition to that, they provide for a quote-unquote waiver policy, but I can't make heads or tails of who gets a waiver and who doesn't. Uh, I've talked with athletes who have said, hey, I, I, I changed schools. I talked to the coach. I had these reasons for wanting to, to transfer. Uh, everybody thought I was going to get a waiver, and then NCAA said no, and I appealed, and they still said no, and now I'm missing 20% of my college eligibility, I'm having to sit out, I get no NIL money, I can't compete, uh, don't have the opportunity to, to be on the floor and during basketball season now. Uh, yeah, that's just not right. Uh, the federal law says we have to have a competitive uh, market, uh, including for labor. And come on, this is America. You're supposed to be free. The U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments last week regarding Purdue Pharma's bankruptcy terms. I know you want communities to get the settlement money in Ohio and across our valley. We've been hit pretty hard, but this deal would also shield the Sackler family from future litigation. Is that favorable in this case? Well, I tell you, I hate this case. Uh, the Sackler family, uh, it deserves all the kicking around they've gotten, in my humble opinion. And at the same time, at least under Ohio law, we couldn't reach any of the money that they have personally. We could only get to Purdue Pharma. Well, they transferred billions upon billions of dollars out to family members. They have agreed uh, under this bankruptcy plan to provide billions to the settlement fund that we otherwise wouldn't get. Do I like it? No. Do I think it's enough? Uh, no. Is it the best that Ohio's going to get under Ohio law? It is. And that's why, reluctantly, I, I support it. All right, Ohio AG Yost, thank you so much for joining us.